I had uh, an experience some years ago, I think it was in 1990, uh, August of 1990 it happened to be, with my wife, uh, we had the good fortune of spending six days in the Boundary Waters together and it uh, happened to fall over her birthday, which is August 8th, and uh, I had, as so many times, decided to thwart a long portage uh, by walking walking upstream and making our own uh, little, little route out of the day and we were thwarting a uh, 300 plus rod portage which uh, is a pretty extensive portage and so I thought we could take some time off of it. She wasn't real comfortable with that situation but we agreed to agreed to follow on and, and do it and uh, we, we were, happened to be going upstream on the Basswood River instead of downstream and I didn't realize that until we had kind of gotten into it and committed but uh, the, the, the portage consisted of uh, run, like Pushing the, pushing the canoe up a series of small falls and, and uh, kind of lining around some rapids and and uh, we made our way. Had to, at some points had to take bags out of the canoe and and fishing rods and whatever else miscellaneous gear that we had and, uh, and and make our own paths through the woods, which proved to be pretty tough, as you as you know if you've spent some time in the Boundary Waters. It's pretty thick forest and. Uh, as we as we made our way through, I'd go up maybe 50 rods or so, and and uh, with the canoe, and then come back and and see how Amy's progress was, and um, and uh, it it spent we probably spent three three and a half four hours, and when we started this adventure, it was right around lunchtime. So um, two hours into it, uh, the, the frowns and the the long faces started to show up, and remind you that it was her birthday, and. Uh, as we as we neared the end, the tears started to flow a little bit, and uh, when I when I'd come back and I'd reassure and try and say, "Come on, honey, this is a good 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 day, and any day in the Boundary Waters is a good day, uh, no matter what the adversity or inclemency it is." Um, and, and as we showed up toward the the headwaters where the where the river begins from from uh, a larger body of water, we just finished kind of, kind of had come out into the opening. Uh, there was a lot of relief and uh, kind of uh, soothing wounds in the water kind of scratched up and, and so on and so forth. And we were just sitting silently and, and, and just kind of soaking it all in as we rested before we would make our way out into the big water and find a, find a campsite. And it just seemed like, oh man, we might have wasted a whole bunch of time and all of a sudden uh, we started to hear some ruckus and racket coming from uh, an old what looked like an old overgrown beaver lodge off into the side of this little this little nook where we were sitting and we started hearing these little <laughs> chattering sounds and sure enough the grass was moving and uh, we both were keenly interested in what was going on there and uh, all of a sudden some otters started showing up and moving around and, and frolicking, literally, literally playing with one another uh, on top of the beaver lodge and around and then they didn't know we were there at first, and then we kind of decided we started moving around, and then they realized we were there, and uh, didn't seem fearful or intimidated by our presence at all. We couldn't have been more than I don't know, 30 yards away from them. We were pretty close to them, so we could watch them. So we decided uh, it was time to move on, and we we had some really we kind of felt like that was a neat neat way to end that trying experience. And as we loaded the canoe, the otters kind of really watched us. We made a few more noises as we were putting things in and got in the boat and kind of eased our way over closer and were able to get a couple of photographs which was really neat and we still have. And uh, the, the bay was sort of a long narrow bay and as we paddled we weren't in any hurry. We knew that we were going to find a campsite and uh, the sun was starting to set and it was really quite peaceful. And as we paddled we, we continued to look back and, and watch the otters and it, it was just amazing. The three of them, it was as if they were escorting us out of the bay and kind of saying farewell. Uh, the three, if you've ever watched otters swim, they, it's like a periscope. Their head sticks up and they, and they just kind of move along this way. Well, all three were right, right next to one another, uh, kind of swimming along. And we paddled real slow. We weren't in a hurry because we were just marveling at this experience. And I'm not sure why it was happening, but we were, we were uh, happy by it nonetheless. And uh, as, as we just about turned around the corner, we looked back and there was a, a big sloping uh, 
piece of granite, a, a rock of some sort that, uh, that was there. And the otters all climbed up on that and three of them sat. The, the three otters that were watching us sat and, and just kind of, it was like they were just watching and if they had, you know, the will to do, they were saying, you know, have a good day, let the rest of the day be, be what it may and be good. And uh, so we turned around the corner and, and sure enough, there's a gorgeous campsite right there. We had uh, everything kind of all, all laid out and in sight. And, uh, Amy decided we put up the tent as we do. We kind of get everything dialed in first and then worry about dinner after that. And uh, she said, I'm going to go get some rest. And went in and, and took a rest. And right about dusk when the mosquitoes start to really come out, I had, I had packed a brownie mix in our, in our packing of food and thought I'm going to surprise her making her a little cake, brownie, quasi cake kind of thing. And, uh, and uh, as I forded mosquitoes and tried to try to make this cake on a sputtering stove and had a little fire on top of the pot lid and uh, had the baking surround baking kind of thing going on, uh, I was just absolutely overwhelmed by mosquitoes. I mean, it was just one of those nights where mosquitoes are just as thick as you can have ever imagine. And right as I had finished everything up and I thought, okay, I'm going to surprise her, I said, Amy! And I just, I didn't get a response. And I, Amy! No response. I thought, okay, I'll just start singing happy birthday. And as I cracked into happy birthday, I just started singing the, singing the little birthday ditty as I walked over and uh, I got to the vestibule of the tent, thought I heard something. Stopped singing, and sure enough, there was she snoring away, and uh, so the the, the birthday uh, adventure kind of ended in that way. But that was a that was a story that that uh, sticks in my my memory quite quite well uh, as a situation where the Boundary Waters is is a is a magical place in in a lot of different ways, and uh, I think it's. It was just a, a story that was fond for me. I had a lot of fond memories about it. I wanted to share that.